there, welcome back to our show. Uh, today we're going to look at two Paul Verhoeven films, you know, from the 90s, during this big Hollywood peak. It's going to look at Basic Instinct and Showgirls. Now, one was a hit, one was a notorious bomb. I will say the actual, the bomb, Showgirls is more interesting film than the hit. But Paul Verhoeven's always been interested in directing, even when he fails, or even when he does something that's weird and off to the side, it doesn't really work. It's always more interesting in a lot of directors' successes because he's an interesting character. He always does... He always pokes at a sore spot in society. He can't resist it. He just... Anything you tell him not to do, that's what he's going to do. He's just going to be that character who just likes to irritate the mainstream and just, just point at the flaws, just can't resist it. Now, Basic Instinct was based on a script by Joe Esterhaz and it's, uh, who is a kind of a writer from the 80s and 90s who made a lot of money, sold a lot of big f scripts like this one, Jagged Edge and things like that. You know, Flashdance. He was, he, he, he was a bit of a hack, but he kind of uh, wrote some scripts that made him think he was more serious than he actually was. But he was, he was kind of like... One of those writers who just seemed to know everybody and he seemed to have lots of people interested in his work, even though the work was very basic, his basic instinct, and not that complicated, ultimately. He liked noirs, he liked that kind of plot, the kind of noirish plot, but he did tend to sort of focus on, like, either women who were dealing with abuse and he'd do it like a, half, a very hammy way, like empowerment thing or he would do a kind of um expose of some injustice using that kind of that kind of uh, noirish plot and he would tend to have a kind of you know the male characters tend to be a bit crude so following basic instinct he wrote stuff like jade and things like that which were but bombs jade's an interesting film with freaking because freaking was not comfortable. You could tell he wasn't comfortable with Joe Hester's script and tried to do his own thing with it and it was just this weird thing that didn't really come together at all. Basic Instinct did do. Basic Instinct was a big hit. But it was a big hit because of Paul Verhoeven who could take the script which had lots and lots of twists not all of them which made sense and he could really make it about we could make a comedy basically. Because I mean the basic idea of this it's hard to say not say basic for talking about this film or it has a script writing really the idea of the script is someone a rock and roll star has ended up dead this prime suspect is Catherine Trammell who's played by Sharon Stone Michael Douglas plays um, the detective who's out, who's out to investigate the case who's had a problem with drugs and drink and who shot some tourists during an investigation and he was cleared but Everyone kind of knows he got away with something he shouldn't have. So he's dodgy, internal affairs don't like him. He's a temper problem. He's he's not the easiest person to get on with. And he's amazingly stupid. This character is really dumb. And I think this is why it was good to have Verhoeven as a director here. Because he knows it. Like, he knows this is a comedy. And the guys of a thriller. It's a Chicagoan thriller, and Verhoeven's very good at doing the Chicagoan stuff. He's a car chase early on, which is really nice. He's all these seduction scenes, and and the whole idea is like um, Douglas's character is an addict who's not acknowledging he's an addict, and he's always looking for new addictions. And Tremel's like the ultimate addiction, someone who who kill him basically. They can't resist her and things. But he's also like a lot of addicts really stupid. It's like everybody in this film knows that Sharon Stone's a killer. Everybody. The extras know. Everybody knows. And the whole film is a big joke of the idea of this big, masculine American hero who's going to save the day and all the rest of it. And Douglas does all of his, his um, usual quirks and stuff like that in the film. But I think the funny thing in this film is I think he's in the joke as well. I do get the feeling he knows he's played a guy who's not that bright. So it makes it funny because I think he knows. So it's not Starship Troopers where the character, actors didn't know 
he's feeling Douglas knows this character's not that bright. And he, he is playing up to that, but he is doing it straight. But it's definitely a case of an actor who understands the absurdity of the film. And it's also that they seem to both know that the script is absurd. It's funny, but it's absurd. And they play up to that, and it's really enjoyable. Because as a part of this guy, he doesn't know just nobody. Everyone knows but him. And the film tries to twist it around, like, originally Tramiel's the person who's the obvious guilty suspect, and she's playing up everything. She's capping it up, and Shamstone is having a blast playing this manipulative person. But um, then they try and twist it as if it's not her, it could be someone else, which did, never makes sense. It never works. They set it up as Dean Triplehorn, who's the psychiatrist girlfriend of uh, Michael Douglas, who turns out had a past with Sharon Stone. And they try and make it her, and she ends up getting framed for the murder in a way that's completely absurd, and it's the worst part of the film. And it doesn't make a lot of sense. But the interesting thing is, um, is this weird thing that Verhoeven brings up in the film? Is this. It's in the script, but I think for Hoban's when it really made it work. Is this idea of these interlocking characters who are all crazy, who are all addicts to their own thing. Like Sharon Stone's like almost like a person who draws in these characters or self destructive to her because she's dark and twisted herself. Like her girlfriend Roxy, who's got anger control issues. You've got Jean Triplehorn's character, who always has issues as well. You've got like um, Tim of Fierce cop who's who's also um, involved in different ways. Who gets killed to set Douglas up, and Douglas is almost this adrenaline addict who needs this adrenaline of almost getting caught and stuff like that, and he needs that sense of disaster always being on him at all times. But there's all these characters, like Sharon Stone, also is a character who's a person who killed her family when she was. Uh, his house where we killed a family now, it's years later, she's older woman. So that's after a friend of hers, and it's like there's all these friends who are very damaged, and it's obviously Michael Douglas is now getting in towards that kind of circle, and it becomes these, these circles of people who are all really damaged and who can't get each other. But someone like Michael Douglas can't admit that he's as messed up as everyone else, and he needs the facade. Well, there's this plot going on which is completely absurd, but because of a whole of his treatment of a sense of humour. He always gave it a pass because it's always a send up, a send up of a noir thing where, and and a normal noir, the hero is doomed, but it's kind of his own fault, and he's kind of aware of it. And this one, this character doesn't, he's not aware of it, but the people behind the film are, and it creates this weird joke about the lead character, about how dumb he is and how crazy he is. You have all these weird. Set pieces like Verhoeven always keeps the camera going. He's always moving the camera till he needs to stop. He's always like doing all the film noir things, like something to look in a corner and stuff like that. What's behind the corner? What's behind here? What's behind there? He's doing all that stuff. It's almost like it's, a, it's almost a distraction of you. You're trying to figure out what's going on and what's going on really is nothing. Nothing's going on, but the thing you thought was going on. And rather than being something Steve's ignoring, it's not that. It's whatever you thought was going on is going on. But you're too dumb to... Or you're too addicted to um, deal with it. You're too much of a dysfunctional idiot. So this is, a, this is a black comedy about addiction. Essentially. And all these people who are addicted and they all flock to Sharon Stone's character. Who is blatantly evil. She's having a lot of fun in this film. This is the most fun she would ever be in a film. And there was always a controversy about um, did she know about the leg crossing scene? You're like, you're watching and thinking, how did she not know? It just doesn't... To me, it doesn't add up, but that's my opinion. It's, it's, it seems like the, the crux of the scene is that, that that's the crux of the scene. And it's like... And, 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 and that's the crux of the film, actually, is the idea of this sort of sense of humour but all these guys who think they're tough. And as women can come in and absolutely destroy them repeatedly just by flashing their boobs, flashing all that stuff, and they will act like complete morons. And throughout the film, men act like complete morons. There's not one sane character in this film, male character, 
or even any fem most female characters are nuts too. But it's just a joke about humanity, how crazy we are, how dumb we are. And it manages to do it with a very hacky script. Because the script's not that good. It's well paced, but the cohesion in the middle was not that not really there. It needed a different third act, something more interesting, but they didn't really have it. But because of Verhoeven directing it, Verhoeven managed to pull it off and make something unique and intriguing with it. Now we go to Verhoeven's uh, Mega Bomb. This is a film that kind of crashed his career. That and Starship Troopers really kind of crashed his career because he, because Robocop was a massive hit, especially didn't cost much money. Total Recall was a big follow up hit film. Then Basic Instinct Commitment was a massive hit. So he had three hits in a row. He was a peak. And then he started to make films that were. Before he'd been taking the piss a lot. Now he was overtly taking the mickey and being misanthropic about it. Which was very different from being cheeky. Like this is the big turn, turning point where I think he just had enough of American bullshit and thought, I'm just going to show you how you are. <laughs> I'm not going to play games anymore. And, and one of the big themes of Verhoeven in his earlier films and in his, throughout his career basically is reality versus your fantasy reality. I mean, as I talked about in Basic Instinct, there was a, the Michael Douglas is an addict with this your fantasies of competence. When they, when, they, when there's, there's, it's not justified, and Verhoeven um, actually talked about something that happened to him when he was younger, where he he got into religion for a bit, and then he got became almost psychotic, and then he realised it was all nonsense, and it was just like it was everything moving in his head, and then he, he started to become much more about reality and what reality was, but he was always fascinated by the the, the fantasies people put up. And, forced on the world and on themselves and so that became something that came through his films a lot of the time you have the fantasy of capitalism curing everything in Robocop you have the fantasy of a holiday that's easy and it delivers all your ideas of what you are in total recall you know you're the you're world safer type of thing and, and basically instincts like an addict who's a, who's a fantasy of he's in control when he's not in control and this one is the fantasy of you can go into the corporate world and keep any dignity whatsoever. And of course, uh, Verhoeven being Verhoeven, he didn't just um, do it in like Hollywood or do it in the this kind of industry. He took it to the point where you could not ignore the reality of um, how craven humanity could be. He took it to Las Vegas and um, the sex industry in Las Vegas and the... So you had um, lap dancers, and then you had the, like the the shows that had lots of nudity on them and things like that, and it's all about sex, and it's all about um, basically people prostituting themselves for money all the time, and the damage it does. But of course, Verhoeven, being Verhoeven, he did not do a reality-based film, because that would be too easy. If he'd just done a reality-based film, he'd pull it away with it. He made that a musical <laughs> and a fantasy. So you're seeing what the people see and people are overreacting a lot of time and the acting's broad, really broad. But it is the kind of world they're in. It's the world they think they're in. They think they're, they think they're in a world where these things mean anything and they have explosions of rage mean anything. It doesn't. It's just about the money. The money. But you've got this, the shows showing you their fantasy of what they are. So these big um, Hollywood, these big Hollywood productions of these kind of sexual shows are there basically to show like you're really there for the nudity, but you're fantasizing. There's more to it than that, and there's just not by having professionalism and dance routines. It's almost like we're saying, oh, we're doing something better than that, and we're not. But before then. Takes Mickey even more by getting into it and actually shoot it like a musical. He shoots that the the lead character Naomi overacts the way like, a, like she's in a Judy Carlin film from the forties. That's the thing is like, um, but she's just a tawdry hooker basically, and you've got this weird overreaction to a lot of stuff that's very kind of Vincent Minnelli's. And then you go to the dance scenes later on, and they are big production values. It's like the wants to make a musical. But he also is going to show you the kind of cynicism below that. 
and it just creates this dark, twisty tale of this is your fantasy, this is what you're telling yourself, and over there's the reality. Over there's the uh, where the money goes and how people have been nasty and sadistic to each other. And Verhoeven's about the kind of juxtaposition of that. But unfortunately, he misjudged it. Because people could understand that this is about the exploitation of women and how women even exploit themselves by saying, okay, this is the men we want, that's how we get paid. And so there's a mutual exploitation in the sense of that the men here are unrelentedly crude and only out for money and power. Because you're into an industry, that's what it's about. It's about sex and the power. That's it, and it's about why would you assume the people who got into that would be any different? Because they're not, they're not going to be any different than that. But Verhoeven actually had it acted as if it was a, a musical from like the 40s where everyone is a bit higher and a bit over the top and probably high. And that creates a juxtaposition that really confused everybody because it's campy as hell and it knows it's and the kind of weird mix didn't work for the main mainstream audience. Because they, they, they never got the idea that amidst all this nudity, it was also criticising their need for exploitation and their need for fantasization and the need to see, oh, it's not that bad. We're, we're just doing it for wholesome reasons or silly reasons, but it's still kind of art in some way. And this film knows it's not. <laughs> but it does know it's complicit. It doesn't have itself above all this. And his characters are completely cynical and completely delusional by what they are. I mean, the only character, Crystal, played by uh, Gina Gershon, is the only character who is knowing of any of this stuff. She's She can be cruel, she can be nasty, she can be vicious, but she knows what the game is. You know, she knows that she's got a shelf life, she's going to make the money, all these things are games. It's ridiculous. I'm going to get out of this alive. Everyone else is deluding themselves into this. Or that. Oh, they've got a job there and they're just trying to survive. You've got dancers in this nasty um, show back biting each other and uh, throwing each other downstairs and things. Doesn't matter. The show's going to keep on going on. Doesn't matter who they are. They're just destroying each other for no reason. You've got all these people. Um, you've got this Glenn Plummer character who's a dancer who... Um, dreams but he can't stop himself from screwing around and he ends up alienating everybody because he's no self-control and he's just this little guy with big dreams and he doesn't know how to do anything with them normally the central character she's an idiot she doesn't have a clue she comes in like, as vague as nothing she gets ripped off she goes to work in the, the, the serious of the lap dance and dives people know she's a talent she, she can't take attention because she was a prostitute and keep people come on corner out as she, well you're her. <laughs> she hates that and it's like, well it's true. And it's that's the level intellectual level she's going at for the full film. But she's doing it in a way over the top acting style. That once you know the the, the joke, it's hilarious. But what, but if you don't get it, it's like what the hell? how am I supposed to sympathize with this character? And it's like you're not meant to. That's what we learn in Starship Troopers. You're not meant to sympathize with these characters. You're meant to observe them and realise Yes, people are really this stupid in life. People really are self self destruct and get sidetracked by stupid things and overreact and blow their chances every day. But Verhoeven, instead of doing a, in a kind of um, Robocop way, which is satirical but making you like the characters, he was doing a Joe Esther script, and as I said earlier, Ron has has did this thing with women a lot of the time, like damaged women and stuff. But he always kind of objectifies them, and it's the flash dancing thing. So it's a teeny flash dance story, but having it directed by someone who knows it's bullshit, which makes it all very, very different. Because all the kind of fantasy narratives of rising to the top. This film shows rising to the top as the seediest thing possible. The most, most base careerist garbage possible. This film shows it by having lots of breasts, lots of nudity throughout and just shows you how craven the kind of um, American dream can be if you that's all you're about. 
And he just shows you again and again. As a poor woman said later after the film came out, was this film would probably be you impotent. It would not be. It's not a sexy film. It would make you impotent because there's so much nudity in this stuff. People are so horrible to each other throughout. There's only one character who's decent, and she gets raped, gang raped. That's how bad the characters are. Like basically, they send characters off to shows and they're gonna get raped afterwards and stuff like that. That's how. The, the film just shows you the horribleness of the world, but also shows you this fantasy thing of people what people are telling themselves. Like, this is a big production value. This is show business. Like, no, it's not. This is abuse. This is, like, industrial abuse. Like, um, this is basically the Harvey Weinstein story. What's going on there? You know, or, you know, any other Hollywood scandal. This is, this is what it's, you know. But done as a musical, as if to say, oh, look, um... Oh, like a really sarcastic musical. But the thing is, because of this disjoint between these two things, like the fantasy thing, they can go over and do this kind of weird musical, but it's also really sarcastic, amidst this story about abuse and everything else going on, it doesn't quite join together in a cohesive way because the script's not there. And there's a bit at the end that doesn't ring true where Naomi gets revenge on this rock or who raped a friend. You're thinking, this character's so base and so horrible. There's no way she should do that. She'd just take the money. You know, and it just, it's weird, but it's almost like Verhoeven makes it sarcastic. It's like, where's she going to next? Um, LA, in an even worse place. Like, Verhoeven does make it sarcastic. It's like, it's, it's, it's one stop to the next stop, this person who's just very destructive and self destructive and has no self control. It's a it's a, it's, a, so it's a kind of a this weird interesting mess. It's very interesting, but it's also because Verhoeven's a really interesting director, but he is stuck with a script that's not fit for purpose. He's trying to squeeze his ideas into the script, but the script keeps on messing about by not quite being. As, you need a different writer to really land this one, to really have the stuff he send up, but also have it not be. So crazy. It just needed another writer, really. But it is kind of funny because people are just... People have come around to this one. It was initially hated. Like, it was loved. It was it was career-ending bad for some people. And then people come around to see what it was about. It was actually a sarcastic look at the industry, the entertainment industry. And just take it at the most base level of what it's about and the sexual abuse that goes on in it. So it's, a, it's an interesting film, but it is a mess. But, I mean, it's not as good as Starship Troopers, who, which really nailed it, because they really knew what they were doing by that point. This one was more, more messy one. Plus, also, America can be prudish, and the sexuality got in the way of them understanding what was actually going on. It's like, oh my god, all these breasts. It's like, yeah, but you get used to them. They become background after a while. <laughs> And yes, the acting is terrible a lot of the time, but it's intentionally terrible, like Starship Troopers. It's got this other thing going on. But it's a weird film. It is a really weird film. You may hate it. Even though I'm talking about it right now, you may watch and go, I hate this. Why did you see these things about it? He's obviously mad. You, there's a good chance you may hate it. Because Verhoeven kind of goes so far and doesn't have a good script to support him. That really, that really does him in. But... I hope you enjoyed this video about Showgirls and Basic Instinct. Bizarrely, I'd recommend Showgirls more as an interesting film, as an auteur film. Well, I'll be back soon with another one. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>